I'm E.G. Marshall. Nothing has concerned mankind longer or more consistently than the future. Before we could write, perhaps even before we could talk, we scanned the skies for signs of sun or rain, made sacrifices to ensure the success of undertakings. Always the inner eye gazed in fear and trepidation on what John Milton called the never-ending flight of future days. Always we have asked of no one in particular or of anyone, what will happen? Our mystery drama, The Clairvoyant, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Tammy Grimes. It is sponsored in part by CertainTeed Fiberglass Attic Insulation and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In Roman times, it was the oracle who read the future in the entrails of sacrificial animals. Nowadays, we're more refined. And we call the oracle a clairvoyant. But the idea is the same. And so is the purpose. To know what is coming tomorrow. The better to take the fear out of our eyes. Excuse me, please. I want to apologize. It is, after all, part of my job here to occasionally read tea leaves. If you want to call it that. But... Look, may I sit down at the table with you? I'd like to explain, if I can, why I try to avoid. You don't mind. Thank you. You see, once upon a time, I was a prayer of Orient. I had a crystal ball. I read palms. But all of that was really rubbish, just as the tea leaves are now. Absolute rubbish. They were only external things to aid my concentration, because without concentration you can do nothing, don't you agree? Everything requires a measure of concentration. You can imagine what is required to look into the future. Yes, thank you. I'll have some coffee. A small amount. I am Russian, you see. But I've lived here in London for better than half a century. My parents brought me here as a child when they fled from the Bolsheviks. Of course, once arrived in London, we spent most of our time with other refugees, all displaced, all frightened. Frightened all the time. And as I grew a little older, I took to telling their fortunes. Tarot cards were the rage then. It was almost a joke at first. But when I turned out to be right, invariably right, well, then it was no joke, and I took to doing it seriously, for a living. All during the 30s and into the 40s, I was earning what they call a pretty penny with my crystal ball. I had become Madame Sonia. One day, my doorbell rang. Yes, yes, coming with you in a second. Yes, Madame Sonia. Yes. You don't remember me, do you? I don't think... Should I remember you? I see so many people, you know. It's difficult. So many clients. I was a client. Oh, indeed? Oh, many years ago. One of your first, I believe. Well, in that case... Come in, come in. I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. It's been a slow day. You came for another reading? Oh, oh, no, at least not today. Later on, perhaps. No, I, I simply wanted to tell you how all of your predictions came true. Oh, my husband and I did reconcile. Good. My husband's business did prosper. I'm very glad. And best of all, our baby daughter did survive her illness and now is a healthy, radiant girl of 19. So wonderful. About to be married. Oh. To an Englishman. And that's why we're here. I see. Of course, we'd rather she be married at home in the States, but her fiancé has enlisted in this terrible war. He couldn't get leave, so here we are. Must be very happy. Oh, we are. We are. He's a wonderful boy. A well, man, I should say. It's not right to call a soldier a boy, I suppose. Well, they decided in a hurry, and he'll be off to France shortly, so they're to be married in his parents' house instead of in ours, back in Springfield. 
which makes me sad. However, all in all, it's very satisfactory, very gratifying. We have no complaints. We're staying with his parents. They have a house, a large house in Mayfair. Oh, Mayfair. Lounge Square. <laughs> very posh, as the English say. <laughs> but <clears throat> I wanted to ask a favor of you, Madam Sonia. And what is that? Will you do a reading for my daughter? Of course. She likes Oh, she will. She's heard about you for years. My husband and I talk endlessly about you. So I'll tell her to phone you for an appointment? Do that. I'd be most happy. Her name is Laura. Laura. Yes. Do you know, I can't remember your name. I apologize. Oh, please. It was a long time ago. I'm Mrs. Jennings. Mrs. Matthew Jennings. And our daughter... Laura. Yes. And her fiancé is Anthony Craig. Oh, perhaps he'll have a reading, too. I'll suggest it. It was good to see you again, Mrs. Jennings. Oh, it was good seeing you, Madam Sonia. And you'll be hearing from my daughter. Yes. Very good, yes. Goodbye. Jennings? Jennings? Mrs. Matthew Jennings? Do I remember anybody by that name? Jennings. I didn't really remember Mrs. Jennings at all. Or her husband. Or that they'd had a little girl. Truthfully, I didn't remember the first thing about them. Of course, it was very nice of her to stop by and tell me that everything had turned out for them as I predicted. But in those days... I was very young. It had seemed then that everything I predicted came to pass. My power of concentration was so strong, so vital, and my intuition flowed so surely, so strongly. It seemed only natural that they should be accurate. Young Laura Jennings did call me the very next day, and we made an appointment for a reading. I have to tell you, Madam Sonia, I'm... Mostly here to please my mother. She thinks you're so wonderful. She exaggerates. Now, shall it be the cards, the crystal, your palm, or what? Which is best? Dear girl, it doesn't make the slightest difference. I could employ the bumps on your head if you like. Oh, I don't think so. Or the print of your foot. Oh, no, no, no. Or you could (laughs) steal an apple and throw the skin on the floor. I could read from that. (laughs) All these things are merely tools. I center my attention upon them and then let my mind go foraging into the future, seeking out the secrets, hunting through time and space for happenings that never were, yet always were, crises that never occurred yet are bound to occur, circumstances for which the stage was set centuries and eons ago, waiting for the actors to arrive. Eventualities which have not as yet transpired, but which are certain to transpire. Fortuities conceived in the dark past, waiting to see the light. Such was my gift to understand. Where it came from, I never knew, nor did I ever care. This I do know. There are gifts from God. Or from nature, if you'd rather put it that way. Well, to get on with my story. I went into a deep trance. I believe that is what they call it. I myself have no use for these descriptive labels. I see green things growing. A little boy. A small boy with a light step. Stepping light. Is he dancing? A, a boy? A, a, I will have a boy. Hard to say. But I feel upon the air, upon the gentle air, I feel the breath of, of love, of wonder, and great joy. Oh, will it last? Oh, tell me, will it last? I feel it goes on. Yes. On and on. I see a little trouble. Not much. Not too much at the beginning. But then then it seems to go on and on. Further than I can see at this moment. It was the clearest intuition I had had up until that time. For there were times when the visions presented themselves in symbols. The way a dream does when the dreamer wants to express desire. 
But this time I actually saw the slim figure of this young girl skimming the grass, her hair glowing in the sun, her arms stretching out. I actually saw it. Oh, Madam Sonia. I am exhausted. You will forgive me. I'm very, very tired. Oh, of course. I'll leave you so that you can get some rest. Another client coming shortly. Yes, there's just one thing. What is that? I'm going to tell my fiancé to come and see you. May I? Of course, dear girl. Oh, Madam Sonia, you've made me so happy. Very glad. If I'd had any doubts about my future, well, you've driven them all away. Thank you. Goodbye, Madam Sonia. Such a lovely girl, this Laura Jennings Such a bright future awaiting her Though every reading was an effort in the extreme Penetrating the veil is never an easy task My recovery from this one was rapid And I was soon able to enjoy thinking back on it a few days later, the telephone rang, and I was not surprised to discover who was calling. Uh, Madam Sonia? Yes? Uh, this is Anthony Craig, Laura Jennings, fiancé. Oh, yes, Mr. Craig. Uh, Laura has this notion that I should have a, uh, a thingy with you, what do you call it? A reading? Uh, yes, that's it. But I have to tell you, Madam Sonia, I don't much believe in that sort of thing. Many persons don't, Mr. Craig. I've always considered it the most avant rot. However, Laura can be very insistent and very persuasive, so if you could manage it tomorrow... Nine o'clock. She arrived on the dot of nine. A most punctilious young man and most charming, most handsome. We went into the small room I reserved for my reading. I placed my crystal ball on a little round table. Anthony Craig sat opposite me, and I invited, by the force of my concentration, the trance state. Ah! Uh, it hurt! It hurt oh, me! Madam Sonia! I cannot! Too hard! Too hard! I cannot! Uh, uh, are you all right? I begin to feel. I see. Madam Sonia, are, are, are you all right? I, I... Go away, get out. Uh, well, please get out, go away. I mustn't, I won't clear out, go away. It's too hard, too much. I was only faintly conscious of my own voice uttering these words, only vaguely aware of my own pain. When I returned to myself, Mr. Anthony Craig had gone. It was our own Henry Wadsworth Longfellow of a century gone by who wrote, Look not mournfully into the past. It comes not back again. Wisely improve the present. It is thine. Go forth to meet the shadowy future without fear and with a manly heart. I shall be back shortly with Act Two. As our first act ended, Madame Sonia Clairvoyant had peered into her crystal ball to ascertain what the young Englishman Anthony Craig might expect from the future. Whatever she saw, or thought she saw, or might have seen, was so disturbing to her sensibilities that she became unable to continue the reading. With cries of, no, no, and I can't, she recoiled from whatever it was she saw and entreated the young man to leave. When I returned to myself, Mr. Anthony Craig had gone. So shaken was I by my encounter that I cancelled all my sessions for the next few days in order to recuperate. I did not even answer my telephone when it rang. But on the fourth day, this is Madame Sonia. Madame Sonia, where have you been? 
I, uh, I've been indisposed. Who is this, please? This is Laura Jennings. I- I've been trying to reach you. What is it, Laura? I must see you. I'm not feeling well, Laura. I'm not giving any readings at present. I, I must see you. It's terribly, terribly important. Laura, in my present state, I don't quite trust myself. Oh, then, Sonia, please, a- as a friend. Very well. Come round this afternoon, four o'clock. Four o'clock. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll be there. And I want to thank you again. <laughs> It's awfully selfish of me to force myself on you this way, but something's happened. Come into the parlor and sit down. You said that you haven't been well. You haven't been giving any readings. That is true. I didn't really come for a reading. I came for advice. Oh, I'm not in the profession of giving advice. I always hesitate a long time, provided I am asked. But... I can't go to my parents. They wouldn't understand. Why don't you compose yourself and tell me what's bothering you? Well, you know I told you we're staying with the Craigs at their house on Lounge Square. So you said. It's very near Green Park, and every morning I've been taking their dog for a run. I like the idea of doing them small favors like that. They've been so kind to me. You are about to become their daughter-in-law. Well, yes. And that's what I've come to ask your advice about. You see, I... I've met someone, a man. A new someone? A new man? It it was pure accident. I always walk the dog through Kensington Gardens, and I sat down for a little while near the statue of Peter Pan. You, You know the one? Yes, I know the one. Every day that I went there, a young man was sitting on a bench nearby, reading the newspaper. I always noticed him, but I never paid any attention to him. Until a few days ago. Oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. What? You're an American, aren't you? How'd you guess? Uh, you're reading an American newspaper. Oh, well, aren't you clever? Not very, no. You're an American, too. Oh, you're not so clever. You can tell by my accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not only an American, I'm from the Middle West. Yeah, so am I. Uh, this is the Chicago Tribune I have it sent to me. It's a day late, sometimes two days, but it smells like home. Mm, I love the smell of newspaper. Yeah, it's like a familiar face. <laughs> it's very hard to get used to a new face, isn't it? Very. Still, I suppose it can be done. I suppose. I, uh, I'd better take the dog back home. <laughs> You're a dog? No. No, I didn't think so. Uh, how could you tell? Oh, it's a King Charles Spaniel. Not many Americans own King Charles Spaniel. Well, that's true. Of course, you could have bought him over here. Or maybe he belonged to your husband. I don't have a husband. You don't? Oh, but, but I'm going to have one. Any day now. Oh, you mean that? Uh, look, I, I, um, I really have to take the dog on home. Will I see you tomorrow? But probably. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I really have no idea. I didn't plan to go back, Madam Sonia. But no matter where I walked in Green Park, I always found myself sooner or later in Kensington Gardens near the statue of Peter Pan. Every day you get here later and later. I do. Why? Well, I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. You're trying not to come here. Aren't you? Well, I... Well, aren't you? Tell the truth. Aren't you? Yes. Why? I don't know. Oh, you do know, but you don't want to say it. You love me. No, I... You love me and I love you. That's the truth. It can't be. It is. I won't believe it. You have to believe the truth. That's the whole point of being the truth. Once you see it, you have to believe it. I can't. You think you can't because it would mess up all your plans to marry. What's his name? This Englishman. Anthony. Yeah. Well, you don't actually have to marry him, do you? Everybody expects me to. Everybody expects you to. Now, is that a reason? Does everybody expect you to marry Anthony when you're in love with John? Is that your name, John? Mm-hmm. Mine's Laura. Okay. Laura? 
now that we've introduced ourselves, when are we going to get married? So you see, Madam Sonia, why I had to come to you. There's somebody else. Do you expect me to advise you on a thing like this? Oh, please, I'm so lost. I, I don't know what to do. You think you love this American? Yes. You no longer love Anthony Craig? Well, I don't know. Dear girl, what can I say? Except that you must follow your instincts in this matter. Go where your heart leads you. What more can I tell you? Nothing more. I'm sorry. Madam Sonia, do one other thing for me. Try to read my future again for me. Dear child, that's been done. But things have changed since then. Nothing's the same. I'm not the same. Oh, please. Please. She was so distressed. So appealing in her distress. I had become fond of the girl and had sympathy for her predicament. So weary as I was, shaken as was my faith in myself, once again, I placed the crystal ball on the small round table, seated myself opposite to Laura, and invited the translate. Everything was the same as it had been before. I saw green things growing, spring melting into summer, a little boy dancing, love filling the soft air. All, all as before. what I see in your future. Then it hasn't changed. I have told you what I saw. Oh, Madam Sonia, thank you. Thank you so much. And I do hope I haven't tired you. It was a pleasant reading. Not like some I have endured. Well, you, you must get some rest now. Yes. Rest. All sessions are fatiguing. I'll leave you then. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. To tell you the truth, I had had quite enough of the Jennings family and likewise the Craigs. I wished them well, and I wished that I might never have to see any of them again. When Laura left, I retired to my private chambers and was about to run a hot bath when my door chime sounded. I groaned in protest. Was I to have no peace at all? No chance to restore my strength, renew my psychic powers? Whoever was at that door did not mean to go away. I went to the door. Uh, Madam Sonia? Yes. I am Horatio Craig. You said Craig? Anthony's father. May I uh, come in? Why, yes, I suppose you may. I can't spare much time, I'm afraid. Please come into the parlor. I came to see you about my son. Oh, do sit down. He's been behaving rather, rather oddly of late. Oh? In what way? Well, he seems abstracted, remote, as though his thoughts were far away. For a young man about to be married, he is singularly distracted and uh, not uh, altogether in possession of himself. Mr. Craig, what has all of this to do with me? Anthony has been this way, locked within himself, as it were, since the day of his appointment here with you. Oh? Now, what could you have said to him to have effected such a transformation? I said very little. Yes, but what? I think you had best ask the young man what I said. I choose to ask you. And I refuse. No, you can't. Mr. Craig... There are ethics in my profession, as well as in any other. The doctor, the analyst, the lawyer, the priest. All these protect what is revealed to them in private. So it is with the medium. Whatever transpires in that little room back there, at that small round table, it remains privileged information. No one is privy to it, except my clients and myself. Do I make myself understood? <laughs> You uh, won't change your mind? No. I'm quite willing to pay. This has nothing to do with money. Oh, you could use some money, it seems to me, the way you live here. I earn enough by my readings to support myself. Then do a reading for me. What? Read my future. I'm very tired. It has been an exhausting day. Oh, it's not even noontime. Even so, I... 
If you care to make an appointment. I want the reading now. Next week. In a few days. Perhaps tomorrow. No, now, right now. I can't. I insist. I... Oh, very well. Come, I'll do my best. Well, that's all I ask. Sit down there, please. Very well. What should it be? The tarot cards, the crystal ball, the palm. What is your pleasure? Well, uh, why not read my palm? Very well. Your hand, if you please. No, no, but... not that one, the other one. <laughs> be very quiet. Don't speak. Be as quiet as possible. Very, very still. No, I cannot. I cannot look. I will not look. Torture. It is torture. It's not right. Not fair. No one can ask me. No one can make me. Madam, Sonia. Pain. The awful pain. The unbearable pain. I'm lost. I am falling and I shall be lost. I am falling from off the earth and there is no one to save me. Dark clock, my throat. Darkness puts out my eyes. Oh, pain and more pain and the horror and the awfulness. I suppose as it happened before with his son, I fainted. When I was myself again, I was alone. Mr. Craig is gone. What horrors lie ahead for us? We do not know. We do not wish to know. We would rather stumble along blindly than know we are heading for disaster. And yet... What joys are ahead? What happiness? Do we wish to know? Perhaps it is just as well that we do not know, that we wait, silent and patient, for whatever the future brings. I shall be back shortly with Act Three. Do you have... Madame Sonia had emerged from her trance to find herself alone. Horatio Craig had gone just as a few days previously his son, Anthony, had left after her anguished denial of what she saw in the futures of each of them. It is now the following afternoon. Oh, no. Leave me alone, whoever you are. Leave me in peace. Oh, very well, very well. Mrs. Jenny. Madam Sonia, I must talk to you. Please forgive me. I'm not well. well. Five minutes. That's all I ask. Try to understand. I've been under a great strain. Oh, what about me? Do you think I haven't been under a strain? I don't understand. Oh, let me come in. I don't want to stand on your doorstep and create a scene. Neither of us wants that. Very well. Come in. But I cannot allow you to stay. Five minutes. That's all. Please sit down. Thank you. Now, what is it? Madam Sonia, the house on Lounge Square has become a, a place of horror, at least for me. The Craig house? Where you were staying? In the last few days, everything seems to have changed. I suppose it was a place of great joy and merriment. It was. And then in the space of less than a week. Tell me about it. Well, most recently, Mr. Craig, the elder Mr. Craig, has become sullen and taciturn. He was always such a pleasant man. Today, he hardly spoke to me at breakfast. He hardly ate anything. And the Craig household always serves those wonderful English breakfasts. But when I pressed him for a reason, he admitted to me that yesterday he'd come to you for a reading. Is that so? That, uh, is so. Yes. But what on earth did you tell him? I cannot repeat it. You must. I am not even certain myself what I said to Oh, that's impossible. You must know what you said. In a trance state, I do not always hear myself. You remember nothing? Not with any clarity. Well, what about young Anthony Craig? 
He came to you for a reading, too. He told me so. Yes, a few days back. And he's changed. He's so distant, inaccessible, even cold and frigid. The English often give that impression. Oh, I know that. Believe me, I know that, and I'm quite prepared for it. But almost immediately upon our arrival here, we broke through that shell of reserve. We've become great friends, and I so look forward to having young Anthony for a son-in-law. Now, these last days, ever since he came to you, everything has changed. Oh, Madam Sonia, I beg you, please tell me what happened here. Uh, Mrs. Jennings, I cannot... You must. The world seems to be crumbling about me, and I don't understand anything anymore. (laughs) Even Laura. What about Laura? Well, she's changed, too. I'm sure that wasn't caused by her coming to you. You gave her such a wonderful reading. But she told us about it. The green grass, the sunshine, that her first child would be a boy. I said that? Well, indeed you did. Don't you remember? Mrs. Jennings... There is something I should tell you about Laura. Laura and myself. Oh, Laura told us about the reading. I told you she had. She came to me another time. Not for reading. Laura is in love. Well, of course. We all know that. And Anthony... It is not Anthony she's in love with. Not Anthony. Whatever you're talking about, what other man could she be in love with? A man named John. Laura doesn't know anyone named John. He's an American. Where did she meet him? In Green Park, Kensington Gardens, near the Peter Pan statue. Well, how? While walking the dog. (laughs) I simply can't believe it. It was love at first sight, on her part and on his. He's asked her to marry him. He's waiting for an answer. Oh, that's incredible. Love is always incredible, don't you think? Well, what's to be done? Whatever is to be done. Hush, hush, Mrs. Jennings. Listen. Air raid. Oh, it's a warning. Well, I must go. No, stay here. We'll go down in the cellar. I can't stay here. I must go home. My daughter and my husband will be expecting me. Mrs. Jennings, don't go. Stay here. I can't. Please, I beg you. I best get back into the house, Mum. That woman, she lives in Mayfair, Lowndes Square. Yeah, I'll have to ask you to go inside, Mum. Will she get home? Oh, it's possible, Mum. Now, uh, will you kindly go back into the house? for an hour. It was the first London bombing of the war. I crouched in my cellar while death and destruction showered down. In the dark, in the dark, I listened to the discordant music of her. The noise of the bombing stayed in my brain. There was something familiar about it. Yet I had never heard a bomb drop before. Or had I? I threw on a coat and went out. Without thinking, I walked. Then I ran in the direction of Lound Square. When I reached it, I could hardly believe what I saw. Half a dozen houses had been completely demolished. Only the shells of chimneys still stood. Had one of these houses belonged to the crates? Had it sheltered them in the Jennings family too? Then I heard something. Tommy, Usher, come along now. Come along with you. I turned sharply and saw a woman in a house dress leading a dog on a leash. Walk along now, my friend. Come with me. I beg your pardon. Yes, Mum. Do you live around here? I live in Bayswater, but I work in Down Square. Did you by any chance know a family named Craig? Oh, so I'd love us I knew them. Which is their house? That one. That was their house. Merciful heaven. Bombed out, complete, terrible thing. Did you know the Craig family well? I worked for them time to time. Quite a lot of late. They were getting ready for a wedding in that very house. Did you know their house guests? The Jennings family. I knew them. Oh, yes. Lovely people. Craig's. Jennings, all lovely people. Were they all, all killed? Well, they're still digging, of course. But it looks like all of them was killed, except maybe the girl. What about her? Well, she used to walk the Craig's dog for them, morning and afternoon. This dog, right here. The King Charles Spaniel. She told me. Well, this afternoon, for some reason, she started off with the dog, as per usual. 
And then she saw me out in front of number 17 where I was doing some polishing. And she asked me would I be kind enough to keep the dog for her as she had an appointment. What sort of appointment did she say? Well, it wasn't for the wedding. Nothing to do with that because she said she was going to the park. Wayne Park. She said generally she took the dog with her, but she said this time it's different. And she'd like to go alone. So I said I'd be happy to keep the dog for her, and she ran off. She never came back for the dog. And whether she went back into the Craig's house or not, I've no notion. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> to the police a few days later when the digging was finished. They'd found the bodies of the Craig family and those of Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. But the body of Laura Jennings was never found and I never saw her or heard from her again. I lived through many bombings after that through the whole siege of London. I came to know in actuality the dust and the dark and the horror, the screams of the injured, the weeping of the bereaved. All these things had come to me in deep trance as I tried to peer into the futures of the two Craig men. All had come true for them, even as I had seen it. As for young Laura, I do not know. One can only pray that she reached Green Park, met her young American friend, and that together they lived through the bombings. Or somehow escaped to the States. As for me, I gave up my profession. My calling, as I used to consider it. In the face of mass destruction, I was afraid to look into the future. Anyone's future. I could not endure the strain. So, for the past 35 years, I have refused to give readings to anyone who did not understand that nothing I say is to be taken seriously. I myself do not take seriously anything I say. It is all a game. An amusement. Something to pass the time. So, if you wish me to read the tea leaves, pour a little tea into this cup. I shall look long and soberly into the cup. You will think me very profound, but I am not profound. I am only a very old, a very tired old woman who has outlived her usefulness. So, pour. Now we pour out the tea and the leaves remain. So let's see. Everything looks... looks bright. So far, you have crossed an ocean. You will cross it again. Someone is waiting for you. Who is waiting for us, Madame Sonia? I think... I think it is a young man. He is impatient. He wants you to hurry back. What's the young man's name, Madame Sonia? Mm, what do you expect from me? How am I to know the name of the young man? I tell you, my powers have faded. I can no longer... If you try, Madame Sonia. Yes, tell us the young man's name. Please try. What is it? The name of the young man waiting for us on the other side of the ocean. I could say a name. It would mean nothing. Not if you say it. So I will say it. I shall say the first name that comes into my head. Peter. The young man's name is Peter. Well? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. She knew. You mean I'm right? I guessed the young man's name? You didn't guess. You knew. I assure you, I knew nothing. Madam Sonia, the young man is our son. <laughs> he's about to graduate from medical school. And then he's getting married. He wants us to come home for both these great events. And his name is Peter. My congratulations to you both. And now... Madam Sonia, do you know why we named our son Peter? We named him <laughs> after Peter Pan. The Peter Pan statue in Kensington Gardens? Where we met. And fell in love. You. A 
are you telling me that you... You are Laura? Yes, Madam Sonia. And this is John. You escaped? I never went back to Lowndes Square, Madam Sonia. I went to the park and met John and never went back. We married. We had a son. That dancing boy you told me about when you read my future. To be so right. I can't believe it. Ah, it is your gift, Madam Sonia. Your gift from God. Perhaps. Perhaps. Let's take another look at these tea leaves, shall we? Eh? Shall we? there are persons who can project their imaginations so forcefully into the future as to detect what lies ahead? I have my own opinion, of course, but I shall not share it with you. You are absolutely free to believe or to disbelieve. That, after all, is what the occult is all about. I shall be back shortly. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Marion Seldes, Patricia Elliott, Ian Martin, and Paul Hecht. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you.